Welcome to the next lecture on the course introduction to R software. You may recall that in the earlier lecture we had discussed the aspect how to import data sets from some external sources, right. And we had discussed about different types of files structure like as .csv, .txt and we discussed how to import them in your R software. Now we are going to continue our discussion and we are going to learn that how one can import a data set that was created in some other software, right, okay. So, let us start our discussion. So, first source which I am going to take is say how to import the data from a spreadsheet. And one of the important and popular package to create a spreadsheet is say Microsoft's uh, Excel software, right. And in that case, the extension of the file is .xlsx or this can also be .xls in the earlier versions of Microsoft Excel software. So, here the question which we are going to address is how to import a data which is created in Excel software and has got an extension .xlsx. Actually, .xls was the extension in the earlier version of the Microsoft Excel software. So, in order to read a file which is created in XLS package, we have a command read.xlsx and then inside the arguments we have to write down the file name. But when I try to use this command, this is going to read only the first sheet of the Excel spreadsheet. When we are trying to create an Excel sheet in the Excel software, then it is possible to create different sheets inside the same file. So, the objective can be whether to read a particular a spreadsheet which can be identified by the name of the spreadsheet or the number of the spreadsheet. Say spreadsheet number equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 or say its name, okay. So, when I am not giving here any further extension and I am simply writing read.xlsx, then it will read only the first sheet of an Excel file. This is an important point which you have to keep in mind, right. But in order to uh, read the files from this package, first step is to install the package whose name is xlsx and after this you have to load this package and only then you can read a file. So, after installing and uploading this package, then we can use this command read xlsx then name of the data file and after this you have to give the option whether you want to read uh, the first sheet or say any other sheet. So, in the next slide I will show you how to give this option. So, now we have two option that uh, suppose I want to read the sheet number 2 or I want to read a particular sheet which has got a name. So, in order to read a particular sheet, I have to use two options, either sheet index, try to see here this all S H E E T, they are in small letters, lower case alphabets, then I is in the upper case that is capital and all other letters are small or I can use the sheet name. Here in this case all letters except capital N, they are in a small alphabet. So, sheet index is used to specify the number of the sheet and sheet name is used to specify the name of the sheet which we want to study inside that file. So, in that case the complete syntax will be read.xlsx then name of the data file that you want to read inside the double quotes, then you have to write sheet index and then you have to write which 
file you want to reach. So for example, here I have given here 2 that means I want to read the sheet number 2. And similarly, in case if you want to uh, read the uh, sheet and you want to specify the name of the sheet, then the same command continues. But instead of here sheet index, I am using here the option sheet name is equal to, for example, say marks. And this is enclosed by the double quotes. So if you want to read any particular sheet, you who can specify the number or the name of the sheet and using this package, you can read this command. There is always a possibility that uh, you would like to read the file of MS Excel software that was created in the earlier version. And in earlier version, the extension of the file used to be XLS. So in order to, uh, to use the older Excel files in .xls format, we have to use another package, gdata. And then I have to use the command read.xls and rest everything remains the same. But in case if you try to uh, use this read xls, this will again only read the first sheet of the file. So in order to read a file of the format .xls, so the first step is that we have to install the package called as gdata. After the gdata package has been installed, we need to upload it. So I use the command library gdata and this can be done exactly in the same way as we did in the earlier case. And after this, uh, you want to read the file, so for that use the command read.xls give the name of the file and here you have to specify the sheet index or sheet name exactly in the same way as we did in the case of .xlsx format. So that is pretty simple actually. So now we have seen that uh, in order to read the xls and xlsx files, we have got two separate packages. These packages were used in the earlier versions of our software. Now in the latest version of our software, a new package has been developed which can read the xlx and xls files under the same package. And this package is here actually read excel. So in case if you try to use the package read excel instead of gdata or xls s then both the files with the extension dot xls and dot xls x can be read from the same package and in order to read the files under this package there is a function read underscore excel and inside the brackets inside the parentheses we give the details of the file as earlier. And in case if you try to use this command, this is going to read the first sheet of the Excel spreadsheet. So in order to read the files, here an extension .xls and .xlsx, first we need to install the package read excel using the command install dot packages and inside the double quotes read excel and after that as usual we will load the library and now in order to read the excel file we will use the command read underscore excel and inside the bracket within the double quotes we will give the name of the file having the extension xlsx or xls. Now from this file, in case if you want to open the file with the particular sheet name or for example, if you want to open a particular sheet or if you want to read any particular sheet of the file, then we need to use the command excel underscore sheets, e-x-c-e-l underscore s-h-e-e-t-s and inside the brackets within the double quotes, 
we have to give the name of the file. And then in the next step, we need to specify the information about the sheet. So, in order to do this, we use the command here read underscore excel and here we already have given the name of the file and now we need to add here one more information which is sshet sheet is equal to within the double quotes try to give the name or index of the sheet. So, by this command we can read the sheet number 3 in the data file whose name is data file dot xlsx. Now, we take another source from which the data can come. Suppose we are going to read a SPSS data file. SPSS is a very popular statistical software. Right. In order to read a data file that is created in the SPSS package, we need to install a special package which is called as foreign. F O R E I G N, all in small letters. So, first we install this foreign package and then we use the function read.spss and we give the name inside this argument. So, in case if you want to read a data file from SPSS package, first step is to install the package foreign using this command, then load this package using library command and then simply try to use the read.spss command and inside the argument enclosed by the double quotes try to write down the name of the file and in the SPSS the extension of the data file is .sav. Right. So, that is pretty simple exactly in the same way and uh, there are some other options also to read uh, the data file from some other software also and for that usually the package foreign works. Right. So, for example, in case if you want to read the file from Octave and MATLAB software, then the command is read.octave and then inside the argument you have to give the name of the file including the path inside the double quotes. Similarly, if you want to read a data file which is generated from this software sysstat, this is another statistical software, then you have to use the command read dot sysstat and then you have to give the file name and its path inside the double quotes in the arguments and then you can read this thing. Similarly, if you want to read a data file from say software SAS, SAS is another statistical software, statistical analysis system and in that case we use the command read dot export x p o r t right and then the same format inside the argument you have to specify the name of the file along with its parts inside the double quotes and similarly there is another statistical software what is called as stata. So, if you want to read a data file that was created in the software stata, you just uh, use the command read.dta and inside the arguments try to give the name of the file and its path inside a double quotes right. Uh, but here you can see what are we trying to do? There are different resources which are trying to generate the data files. And our objective is to read them inside the R software. Well, it is difficult to know that which format can be read in the R software and which of the package has to be used. So, I would suggest you that whenever you want to read a particular type of data uh, set, please try to use the help and try to see what is the command to read the data and what additional package has to be installed. And once you know this thing, then the steps are very simple. First step, install the package. Second step, 
load the package using library command and third step is use the proper command to read the data file and then you can uh, read it. In case if you want to have some more description on the data import and export that can be also found in the R manual which is located at this data set on the website of the R project. So, means if you want to have a specific thing you can always read it from here. So, after learning that how we can read the data from different sources or in different formats, the next objective is that whenever we are trying to run the program, how that program can be saved. One option is that, that we can see the outcome of the program on the screen and the second option is that we would like to save the outcome of the program inside a file and that file can also be of different type like a txt or csv or some other format. So, now in the remaining lecture I am going to illustrate how one can save the outcome of a program inside a file. But in order to understand it, first we also need to know that uh, how to see the contents of the working directory. Because whenever you are trying to save the, a file in a directory, you would also like to check whether that file is there or not or what are their contents. So, first of all I try to uh, explain you here that how we can see the content of the working directory. So, in order to see the contents of the working directory, we have a command here list dot files. So, we try to write down here l i s t dot f i l e s files and the arguments. So, when we try to do so, this provides us the list of all available files in the working directory. Right. Now, if you recall as some lectures back, we had constructed a directory for our course and this directory was located on the C drive and the name of the directory was R course. So, what I am going to do here that first I am going to set the working directory and then I would try to use this command list dot files and argument to see the contents of the file. So, you can see here that when we try to do it on the R console over here. So, first I try to change my working directory and then I try to say here list files and you can see here that we have these many files. And these many files if you try to see here on the R course directory also we have the same files, right. So, yeah, I mean the phone size is a little bit here is small, but still you can believe on me that these are the same files which are available over here, right, okay. And uh, yeah, here also I have uh, given the outcome and the screenshot, so you can read it over here, right. So, here is the outcome of the directory. Our course, but definitely this uh, outcome was taken on a different computer. So, this is a little bit different with what I have shown you here, but here is the screenshot of the same thing. So, that is a pretty simple thing to understand and now I come back to our main topic which we are going to cover in the remaining part of this lecture. So, now my objective is that I am trying to run the program and I want to redirect the outcome of the program inside a file. As I said, whenever we are trying to run the program, there is going to be an outcome and the outcome can be seen either on the screen or that can be saved to a file. So, now first we try to see what are the different possible commands to see the outcome and then we will try to see how we can redirect them towards a file. So, if you remember, uh, we had done a function here cat cat. And uh, cat was used to demonstrate the outcome in a particular format, 
right. So, for example, if I try to take care of a very simple example, suppose I try to add 6 and 8. So, and I try to save this outcome inside a new variable say a and s and suppose I want to print the, the outcome of a program something like the answer of 6 plus 8 is I mean this 6 plus 8 is going to be in the form of a string means a character that is not going to be added and then whatever is the value of this variable a n s and then by this backslash n inside the double quotes that is indicating that the next outcome is going to be on the next line. So, this is indicating a change of line that is new line and after that we have to write down the file is equal to and then inside the double quotes I have to give the name of the file in which I want to store the outcome or the name of the file where I would like to store the outcome of the program. And after this whatever is the output that will be saved in this file that is uh, located inside a working directory. Right. So, if you try to do it here in order to do it we need one more function and this function is sync. This function sync helps us in redirecting the outcome of your here cat inside a file. Cat function cannot work alone. So, this is how we are going to uh, do it here. So, just for the sake of your uh, understanding, you may recall that we had uh, done two functions print and cat to get the outcome in a particular format. They had their own restrictions, but now we have learned what is the difference between the commands print and cat. So, now if I want to redirect the outcome of a cat, so what we have to do here first that I have to call the sync function and I have to inform the R that what is the file or what is the name of the file in which the outcome is going to be stored. So, in order to do that thing we try to write down say here this command sync s i n k and inside the argument inside the double quotes I try to write down the name of the file here in which I want to store the outcome right and after that we try to execute the program over here. Whatever is my program that is executed here and after that the outcome is saved to this thing and after that we try to write once again sync and inside the argument there is blank that means sync arguments. This function will help us in changing the mode that means as soon as I give here the sync after this whatever is the outcome of my program that will always be diverted towards the file. But once I have done my job then if I try to give here sync and this arguments then again I am trying to inform the R software now please stop giving the outcome of the program inside the file, but now show the outcome of the file only on the R console that is on the screen. Right. So, this is a command to stop delivering the output to the file name or to the file whose name has been given earlier. Now, uh, I would like to take an example to illustrate uh, this, uh, this concept, but before that let me just uh, briefly clarify the difference between the print and cat functions. So, if you try to recall the print and cat these are the functions which are used to write down the output of a program, but both these functions were used to write the output to the console 
console in simple language I would say that this is the say, screen. That means whenever we try to run the program inside the R software whatever the output is coming on the screen that is the outcome on the console of the R software. Now what is the difference between cat and print? The cat function has the capability to redirect the outcome or the output of a program to a file provided we have supplied a file name whereas this capability is lacking in the print function. Print function cannot redirect its output to a file or to any file. Now we are going to use here a function sync which will force the cat function to redirect the outcome to a file. Cat function cannot do it alone. So in order to do it there are three steps that we have to follow. First of all I have to use the function here sync and inside the double quotes I have to write down the name of the file in which we would like to store the outcome or in which we would like to redirect the outcome of our program. Now in the second step I have to write down source s o u r s e and inside the double quotes I have to write the name of the file or the name of the script file containing the program right that means whenever we want to store the outcome first I need to write down my function inside the script file and that script file has to be saved inside the working directory. That file which is containing the function that file is specified here the name of the file is mentioned here. Here I have used the file name as a script.r that is simply indicating the script of the program is written inside this file. So as soon as I say here source and I try to give the program name this will run the program or run the script and whatever is the outcome that is captured while running the program that is redirected to the file name the file name which is given here as say output.txt and once the program is over now we need to inform in the third step to my program now I do not want to redirect the outcome towards a file please stop it and now start giving the outcome on the screen or the R console. So in order to inform this thing to my R software we will use here a function sync and then we write this argument. So this will inform the R software to resume writing the outcome to the R console. When we are trying to do so there are some other options like as append that can be true or false for example if I am trying to run the program today and whatever outcome has been stored inside the file and tomorrow I try to rerun the program then whether the outcome should be appended or it uh, should be overwritten on the outcome of the earlier day and so on. So these options are there which we have to specify by writing true or false and then whether there is going to be split or not these uh, several options are there but I am not going into that detail but definitely I would like to take here a very simple example to illustrate all these things. So what I try to do here I am trying to use a data set that we have created earlier and then I would simply try to write a small program although we have not done this part but here my objective is not to tell you how to write the program but simply to show you that whatever is the outcome of the program that can be stored inside a file right okay. So if you try to remember some lectures back we had created a file example 1.csv right and in this file we have uh, three variables that we had given as say here x1, x10, x100 
and they were containing four values like as 2, 3, 4, 5, 20, 30, 40, 50, 200, 300, 400 and 500. And here I am using the option header is equal to true so the first line of this data has been sacrificed as the header. Right. So, in this uh, file if you try to see here this is my data set. I will try to show you on the R console also. But here if you try to see there is a first column, second column and third column. What I want to do is the following. I simply want to find out the means of the data set in the first, second and third column. So, what is my objective? I want to find out the mean of say here first column, then mean of second column and the mean of third column. Well, I can do it uh, separately also, but I would like to uh, write a program in which I would like to store all the three means inside the file directly. Right. So, you can see here uh, these three columns can be recalled by the names data inside the square bracket I have to write 1, 2 and here 3. So, you can see here these are the data set which are coming over here and my objective is simply I want to find out the mean of this data set 2, 3, 4, 5, mean of this data set 20, 30, 40, 50 given here and the mean of this data set that is 200, 300, 400 and 500. So, before we try to do it, we us try to see this data set. Right. So, I try to read this data file on the R console. Right. So, you can see here, this is my here the data. Right. And now, when I try to write down here data one this, so this gives me the first column, this gives me the second column and this gives me the third column. right? And now, in case if you try to find out here the mean of this data, I can also find it out in this particular mean of data 1, this is 3.5, mean of data 2 as a 35 and say mean of here data 3 as the 350. But here, if you try to see in this highlighted part I have tried to find out the mean of the three columns, but that I have done manually one by one. Now, I want to write down a small program to give me the outcome in a single shot. Moreover, if you try to see the outcome of these three commands mean of data 1, data 2 and data 3 that is coming on my screen. This is my R console. And I do not want this data to be here on the screen, but I would like to save it inside a file. So, now what I try to do here is the following, right. I try to write down here a program, say here, whose name is mean x, y, z, and this is given as a function, and the input is coming from this here file data. And yeah, means I simply try to define here a variable mean of data to be 0 just to initialize the program and then I try to use here a loop in which I am saying that for i in 1 to 3 that means I have here 3 columns data 1, data 2, data 3. So, I will try to denote them by say here data comma i. So, I am trying to say here please try to read here the data column say data this bracket comma i and then try to find out the mean of this column. And whatever is the mean of this ith column that has to be saved inside a new variable which is here mean of data and it has to be stored in the ith position. And after that this program will run from i goes from 1 to 3. So, the program is going to run for 3 times. And then there are going to be three outcomes mean of data 1, mean of data 2 and mean of data 3 and I want to express the outcome in this particular format. I want to write the mean of x and then I would write to write down 1, 2 or 3 that is x1, x2 or x3 and then as a character I would say is and then whatever is the value of this here mean of data i it has to be printed here and then after the this there has to be a full stop and the next outcome has to be on the new line. 
So, that means I want to write down here something like the mean of x 1 is whatever is the value, then there is a change of line and then and then the outcome will be the mean of x 2 is this whatever is the value, then the on the third line the mean of x 3 is like this. So, I try to write down this program and then I try to save this entire program inside a script file which is here mean x y z dot r right and then I try to do this thing. I try to create a file whose name is output underscore mean x y z dot txt in which I am going to store the outcome. This is a file which is going to be created to store the outcome of this program. And now after this command here sync, then please try to check. This will create a blank file in your working directory. And before doing it, this file will not be there. That you can check yourself. Now after this, I try to write down the second step source and I try to give here the name of the file in which I have written the program. This file name is mean x y z dot capital R that that is a R script file. Do not worry, I will try to show you on the R console also. As soon as I execute this command, this will write the output inside the file. Which file? This file. Here I have two options either I can use say source this thing or I can also write down the program say mean x y z data and it will also write down the outcome over there. And then in the third step I will write down here say sync and then this argument and this will resume writing the output to the console. So now let us try to do all this operation on the R console. So what we try to do here that first I try to create here a script file. So, I try to copy this uh, function over here. Now, so first we try to open here new script file. So, this file is you see here and I am trying to copy the same program over here. Now, you can see here in this the directory there are here only 8 files and there is no file say call as mean x y z dot r. So, now this file is here and I try to save this file here as say, say mean x y z, mean x y z and I try to save it in this directory over here. So, now you can see here now we have here 9 file and this file what we have created here this is here which I have here highlighted right and now I try to save this file now this file is saved and I try to come on my first step that is I need to specify that where the outcome of this file is going to be stored. So, I try to create here a file output underscore mean x y z dot txt and you can see here that this file is not present in this working directory. So, as soon as I try to do here enter now you can see here that this file is created over here. This is here and you can see here that this file here is blank. There is nothing. So, I try to close it here and then I am trying to run the program by writing here source and the name of the program. So, the name of the program is mean x y z dot r. So, I try to write down source and inside the double quotes I try to write down the name of the R script which I want to run and as I try to give it here say enter there is no output here. But now if you try to see in this R working directory if you try to open now the same file this file has this outcome as yes, I can show you here more clearly right. So, you can see here the outcome has come here the mean of x 1 is 3.5, the mean of x 2 is 35 and the mean of x 3 is 350. So, you can see here that this, uh, this outcome has been written on this function. Now, 
in case if you want to inform the R now that please do not send any more outcome to this file. So, you have to now say here sync and then arguments and after this you will get here and after that you will inform the R console to not to send any outcome to the file. right? So, here I have shown you now that how you can redirect the outcome to the file and here you see I have given you the screenshot of all those things. First I try to change the directory and then I try to create a file name and if you try to open this file in the R course directory you will get this outcome and this is the screenshot which I have just shown you. And uh, this is another the screenshot of the same thing that first I try to write down here the program then I try to see what is my program and then if I try to run the program over here uh, I will get this outcome right. You can also see it here that if I try to write down here mean x y z dot data you will get here this outcome right. Now, we come back to our slides and now in case if you want to write the outcome on a different type of file for example, suppose you want to write the outcome in a CSV format then briefly I can explain you here that the command to write the outcome in the CSV file is write dot CSV and uh, the advantage or the feature of the CSV file is that that every row of the file will indicate one set of outcome of the data right and those outcomes are separated by commas. So, the command to give the or to redirect the outcome towards the CSV file is that you try to use the command write.csv then you try to give whatever the file name you want to give where you want to store the names and then whether you want to have row names or not the different types of options are there. So, I am not going into that much detail, uh, but uh, I am simply trying to tell you that this option is also there. For example, in the same example that we have done, if I want to write down the outcome inside a CSV file, then the command will be write dot CSV and what outcome we want to write means our script uh, that is mean x y z and inside the argument the data on which I want to execute the program mean x y z and then the file for example, output underscore mean x y z dot csv that is the file name in which I want to store the outcome and here I want I do not want to give here the row name. So, that you have to give it here as a false and once you do this then if you try to check the working directory this will be created inside the R folder right. So, now in this lecture we would like to stop here and you may see that in this lecture we have uh, learned that how we can import the data which is created in some other softwares and after that we also have learned that whenever we are trying to execute the program then how we can redirect the outcome to be stored inside the file. Now, here I would like to conclude the topic on data handling and in the next lecture we will try to come up with some other interesting topics. Till then goodbye.